Hey gang, this is Terrellther here. I'm uh, seeing a lot of complaining on Twitter, a lot of complaining in the lobby, a lot of complaining on Facebook uh, that Glowgob is overpowered, he's ruining the game, uh, everybody should get a free Glowgob. You know, just all kinds of useless complaining. Uh, usually by people who don't understand how Glowgob's healing actually works. Now, as you noticed on this game, that I actually have Glowgob unlocked. I'm not going to play him at all uh, in this match. One other thing you'll notice here is after we cap the artifact and get our second flag, we're going to lose one of these players. That ping on the map was just to show people how to get up to the artifact. That's just the easiest way to get there, uh, particularly if you know some of these guys haven't played this map before. Because, you know, hey, it's kind of open beta. There's a, there's a lot of new players. So I use my Shadow Blades on Ilyana to quickly build my stacks of Impending Doom. That allows me to crit every single attack that I do. So, uh, as you notice here, uh, one player dropped. Uh, if the player just simply goes offline, uh, they'll still be there. Their health bar will be zero. I'm thinking this guy just crashed or something bad. Maybe his power went out. Whatever it was, it's bad. He's gone. He's not going to come back. Um, so, here's the initial engagement here. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that those two guys in blue are being... The three guys in blue, rather, are being rather stupid. You're going to stand in the middle with three characters when you don't know where the other two teams are. Uh, you got to treat this kind of like League of Legends and, you know, bushes. You know, if you can't see what's in the bush, you have to assume the enemy's there. It's the same thing in this game. If you can't see where the enemy is, you have to assume they're everywhere. Because they usually are. You're going to get flanked a lot in this game. There's really nothing you can do about it. Now, you notice that character there. I didn't crit him every single time, even though my mechanic allows me to. The reason is is because he has a tactic equipped called Adaptation. I can only crit him once every 10 seconds. And so I thought I was safe there, apparently I was wrong. And they're going to kill me there for my bad positioning. Also, my reactions were pretty darn slow on that there. Uh, if I had reacted quicker, I could have hit my four to knock him up before he landed that pounce. So green has gotten a little greedy, and they've decided to spawn camp us. I'm going to use Asa to break that. I'm going to pick a time when I know Glowgob is not focused on me, get all my damage in, because I can do more damage, and my CC is better if the target, if my victim is not targeting me. The other thing I notice here is that blue is helping green. Uh, this is a strategic uh, mistake. Y you cannot win a game in Wrath of Heroes unless you attack the team in the lead. So I'm going to switch back to uh, Ilyana here. And you'll notice that I don't have any of my bonuses from having multiple Dark Elves in the group. You will not receive those while you are standing in the spawn. You have to actually come out in order to get the racial bonuses. West flag. You see here, I ping the map, make a mistake, uh, tell my team, hey, my bad. You know, don't, don't be afraid to admit a mistake. It's, it's not going to hurt you. And again, that was bad positioning on my part. I should have been behind the, should have been behind that little uh, wall there, and I wasn't. So they pulled me and punished me for it again. Also, remember that you can communicate with everybody in the scenario by using the slash all chat. Uh, you can use this to forge a temporary alliance uh, if you need to. Kind of like in this case, I'm going to remind Blue, hey, you're not going to win unless you attack the team in the lead. So they're going to start actually listening to that, and they're going to start focusing 
uh, on green and you're going to notice their score is going to go up pretty quick but our score is going to go up faster. So yeah, what we're going to notice on this one here, there's one guy standing at the objective by himself. You know, again, you never, ever, ever want to be by yourself uh, in Wrath of Heroes if you can avoid it. What we were trying to do there is go ahead and take that flag to neutralize the artifact, but Green ended up taking another flag and thus would have saved it. Uh, I think there's somebody standing on the artifact anyway. I believe Blue's there. So, same if yeah, Blue was there capping the artifact anyway, but I can't assume that. This is actually one of my most favorite features of uh, Wrath of Heroes. Uh, it's the radio chat button. You can access it by pressing C, and it'll give you kind of the illusion of voice chat, even though you don't really have it. Um, I'm using it to say, hey, follow me, hit my targets, and then I'm going to actually call targets by hitting C1. Okay, you notice here that I noticed that one of the aces and hit is five elite bodyguard that's going to reduce all damage that somebody else takes by 75 percent and it'll go to the ace instead ace will then subsequently heal that back up when i noticed that i switched to the character who hit the bodyguard and called that particular switch uh, now this also nerfs glowgob's healing as well uh, how glowgob's healing works is it heals for a set value and then that heal is split among all characters in range to receive that heal. So if Glogob's only in range to heal himself, he's hurt, he's going to take the full heal of any heal that he does. Now on his one, that's 63, he can boost it to about 80 with a tactic, or rather a uh, mastery ability. And on his two, it's 213. So yeah, what I was telling my team there, same thing. You can't see the enemy if you can't account for everybody. You have to assume that they're everywhere and they're ready to come behind you and ash jam you. So yeah, there you see the elite bodyguard. So I go ahead and hit the switch and then I start to hit the player that hit it. the other thing about elite bodyguard is that you have to stay in range. The ideal situation to deal with that is just simply AoE, but there's no AoE heroes in the game at the moment, uh, so you know you just have to make do. You switch targets, you can get the same effect. So yeah, for example, if there's if there's two damaged heroes standing around Glogob, and he hits his two, and he's damaged himself, that 213 is going to be spread three ways. And it's going to remain that way until one of them gets topped off. That's how you heal debuff Glow Goblin. That's how you burst through his healing. Alternately, you can have a Bulwark around and use his four to completely stop all healing on a target. But we don't have that, so we're just going to have to make do. Also, what you saw there is we took advantage of the knockdown on Ace's pounce to burst down the Glow Gob as well. So you can do that, too. So it's very obvious that I have my team believing in me there. Now, when you see that bubble around you like that, that's going to let you know that you have Elite Bodyguard on you. And you can also see that on the enemy players as well. That's another tell that they have it. So right now, uh, life is good. My team trusts me. They believe me. Uh, they are following my calls and my god they're playing brilliantly 
you know, like that's one thing though. If you step up your game, often the other players in on your team will step up theirs as well. If they see that you give a damn, a lot of times they'll play better because you care. Another thing you notice when that Asa pounced me, I went ahead and targeted him real quick. Uh, that lowers the damage on the pounce and it prevents the knockdown effect on him. So if you see a, an Asa in the air and he's real close to you, just target him. Uh, if you see him flying through the air, go ahead and hit your four and you can prevent it altogether. Notice how low health we are right now and we are staying alive through the use of Asa CC through my burst. I mean, this is this is just brilliant how they're doing this. Now, another thing is that we are completely out of position here, so that's why we died. We were fighting in between the two enemy spawns. That's generally a bad idea. You never ever want to do that, uh, but you know what? It kept them, you know, busy for a little bit. So, I mean, I guess it was worth it. Um, yeah, but generally don't want to do that. So yeah, that uh, he ran out of range of Glogob's heals, so we just went ahead and finished him off. There was no way Glogob's going to be able to heal him with an ace on him and his uh, Ileana running away from him. So as you can see, same deal. There are multiple damage targets that Glogob will have to heal. This nerfs his healing. Now they're going to come out and train me, but you can see my train of thought. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to force his heals to spread. See, because if you don't force the heals to spread, that happens. Okay, one player is going to eat the full brunt of the heal, and they're going to get healed up very, very, very quickly. But you notice there we still had, uh, you know, an Asa in the back uh, hitting another target, still causing the heals to have to spread a little bit, but it makes Glugup choose between healing one person or another. Oh, by the way, I thought I should mention uh, the masteries and tactics you see there. Uh, the first one is Brute Force, 10% uh, bonus crit damage. Uh, the second one is Jagged Edge, because there's not really anything better uh, to put in right now, at least for damage output. I'd like to put Assault there, but that's on Korth's tree, it's in, he's not available right now. And uh, the last one uh, is something that increases the damage of my Doom Bolt by 50% while I have any stacks of Impending Doom. Now you can see that very clearly, uh, how it did 25 base, and then the second one did 37 base. Uh, and then when you see when I build up my stacks of Impending Doom, it goes to like 60. Now you also see that I stack Word of Pain uh, with the Doom Bolt. So I can do a good 110 damage per global cooldown. I mean, Glowgob's not going to be able to outheal that just by himself, and if you spread the damage around like I showed you there recently, uh, he's really going to be screwed. You're still going to be able to kill anybody you want despite Glowgob's presence. Uh, we're, just gonna, we're at one point away from victory, so we're just going to finish capping the artifact and call this one a win. Victory. So there you go, a win. Five man, complete pug against a pre-made with a 25,000 healing Glowgob. Glowgob is not overpowered. You just have to know how to play against him. My team won in spite of all that. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, go kick some butt out there and rat the heroes.